Good evening. I am going to be joined by Erica Davis, who is sheer joy on here. She's a fashion expert, pretty similar background to me, but her background in print journalism and newspapers and magazines is in fashion. Mine is in beauty. And I know a lot of you have saved a timer for this. So welcome to you all, but I will obviously save it. Uh, so you can watch it in your own time. I've got my notebook. I've got my pen. Erica Davis has already requested to come in. Let's go live. And I can tell she's going to join me because there's that weird little glitch at the beginning. She'll be a riot of colour. I will be so boring in comparison. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, I'm so thrilled. I love your lives. I'm, I, I just, just love talking beauty. Well, it's really interesting because I just described you as the yin to my yang. I mean, I've got a riot of lipstick colour on. That's about as bright as I get. Well, but I, I was just... I was just thinking that I'm quite minimal for me today. So well, I and also, also that back wall is relatively calm for your house and sort of, it's very Nadine, isn't it, that back wall? Apart from my leopard lovely lady. That's true, that's true. <laughs> and, Kate Ma and Kate Moss. To anybody that doesn't know, this is Erica Davis. And Erica Davis ha yes. and I have a really, really similar career. But in, I did beauty, Erica specialises in fashion. Erica dabbles in beauty brilliantly and has the hair of dreams. I dabble in fashion, not so well. But I just wanted to get your take on things from a journalist's perspective, because I have to say, one of the reasons I think I love following you, I love your Sunday sessions and your stories. I love the way you create things. And I do think it's because you think you've been trained the way that I have. You know, the way that they drill that into your head to make everything have as much information as possible. Every Feature, page you've ever worked features, on. Yeah. Features first. My background's fashion features. So that's how I think. I think about, you know, the, the sort of, okay, regular features. I do a, a style journal on a Friday, which is my kind of roundup of the week. I've got, you know, my Sunday styling. I like those regular wardrobe pieces in your week of Instagram because it makes me feel more organized and I feel a little bit more in control of it all I can't do that sort of random random I'm here I'm there I'm everywhere I like structure I also Dean don't like being online 24 7 so actually that really works for me I can kind of fit it into my life I like crafting things so I like putting things together and then put it all up and then I can kind of go off again for a little while are you mean to say you've got life, Erica Davis? You've got a family and a husband well. and a house <laughs> and renovations and builders. Yeah, the builders are in. The builders are in. The dog is currently sitting outside. I've put AirPods on. I hope that's okay because then I can shut out everybody else out there. So the dog yeah. and the children. I can hear you completely clearly. Good. Um, good, good, right, good. let's dive straight in. You don't have to limit it to 10. I know it's really hard to it's limit it. Ten. Honestly, you should see my desk. I wish I could do an overview. I've just brought everything. I thought we'll just chat. Good. Just, Go for just it. Just chat. Please ask your guest to turn the volume up. Oh, right. Okay. Oh. Hang on. Let me put it up. Is, is that uh, better? Is I that can better? hear you really clearly. Okay. I, I hope I can. I hope everyone can hear me now. Right. Where should we start? You, you start, start at the very beginning. A very good it's place a very to good start. Place to start. <laughs> <laughs> They're saying they can't hear me. I wonder if it's because I've got my AirPods in. Everybody? Should I try? Go on. Should I try taking them out? Try. Go on. Can you hear me now? You're a lot louder now. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> right. Also, can I just say this? I've only met Erica once, twice. Even though I feel like I know her really well and we've become digital friends. But for two women that make their living digitally, I've got the feeling we've got quite a lot in common, which is that emoji, right? Yeah, we probably have. There's probably lots of stories we could tell about people that we've worked with in the past. Because I think we were probably doing it around the same time. Yeah, oh, completely. I think, I think we were, yeah. yeah. Um, right, cleanser. Can I start? To, oh, good. I, I can hear it now much better. This is great. Good. Thank you. Airpods. Airpods. Um, cleanser. I, I don't know if it's my age, but I'm all about a balm cleanser. And this Emma Hardy has been, it's been a repeat buy for donkey's years. I've loved it, used it. I probably look where I probably use too much because I just, 
I don't, I really don't think, and can I just say, there are probably only, there are maybe three bombs that are continual features in this. And it doesn't matter how old somebody is, what their skin type is. And the Moringa cleansing balm from Emma Hardy is one of the all time favorite cleansing balms. Yeah. How would you describe your skin? And what do you love about this product? Um, so balm has been a thing as I've got, so I'm 45 now. I feel like my, <laughs> I feel like I, my texture slightly changed, but I think that's got a lot to do with the fact that I am so much better at looking after my skin than I was. And I've always, you know, been a wash, put it on, you know, put my moisturizer on, never go to bed with makeup on. I've always been really good about it. But I think thanks to you, thanks to Caroline, thanks to these brilliant women who are basically giving us free advice online, I've learned so much and i was a fashion and beauty director for a long time so you know i'm learning things all the time and also new products all the time yeah i mean let's be honest here when you and i were in the thick of working on magazines and newspapers um it was cleanse tone moisturize yeah and occasionally an spf if you went on holiday yeah it truly the world of skin has truly been revolutionized in the last 10 years so don't feel bad about it and i slept in my makeup through most of my twenties. <laughs> so there you go i think it's really it can be really confusing though if you don't know what you're looking for you know the whole world is so full of brands and do i need a retinol do i need, what acid what vitamin what, what 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 so i think the fact that you're here talking everybody through it is amazing and I and it's really interesting because when I walk into a booth, I'm not overwhelmed, even though there's far too much stuff. But I could quite happily walk into a Zara and go, Whoa, I have no idea where to start. I'll just yeah. take that black top and those black trousers and then walk away. <laughs> so, uh, what you should do is you should start doing the opposite of this basically and start taking doofuses like me around and coloring us up. You're Get not a doofus, but, it, but it's in. interesting because I think I've got this, I can, I can scan a clothes shop. Yeah. In, in seconds, I can scan it. So it'll be like you going into Boots, boots. and, and no exactly yeah. yeah, I can scan any, basically any counter and pick the three things I would buy off of it straight away. So yeah, it's just a skill honed over years, don't worry. Yeah, so, exactly. um, uh, and do you use that morning and night, that clean? No, so that, well, yes, but I would try, probably try and do less of a buy one. This one I find brilliant because it removes makeup. Yeah. So, and and I, I like getting really clean and I'll do that, if, you know, hours before I even go to bed so I will quite happily sit there with a retinol on my face from seven o'clock in the evening and then that's that's me done um but no I would probably use more of a cream in the morning so I like things like the Lizelle I like that sort of creamy cleanser in the morning that in fact I'm saying that because I've literally just finished a Lizelle one it, do you like the original um cleanse and polish yeah Okay, so that's really interesting. So are you a muslin cloth person? No, I'm, I'm a flannel. I will, yeah, flannel. In okay. fact, look, the, the Emma Hardy, because this is a new one that I'm just about to start. Um, I don't really use, I, I just tend to use my flannels. Yeah, I, I'm completely with you. I started off, I remember originally using the Eve Long cleanser because she was the first person to do a balm cleanser. And I, and I, for years I had muslin cloth, so they were hanging over every radiator. <laughs> And then one day I just thought, no, I need something a bit more substantial. And I'm much more either a, a, a bamboo microfiber cloth or a flannel. Yeah, one. Agree with yeah, you. yeah. Stick them in the washing machine. It's fine. Uh, yeah, that's it. Done. Yeah. Anyway, then I, I'm all about layering on. So I am in love with CEO Sunday Riley at the moment. So I mix the, um, the, the, the balm and yeah. the serum. Okay. Little tiny drops of that. So I'll put that on after I've cleansed in the morning. And then I, I love hyaluronic. So anything with hyaluronic, I'm basically, they're my go-tos. I don't know lots, but what I do know works for me. Um, and I love SkinCeuticals HA. Intensifier. Oh, it's so good. I always, feel empty guilty. Now. <laughs> I always feel guilty when I love a SkinCeuticals product, but there is a reason that they cost that much money. I just love that, that product. It's beautiful. I love it. And mm -hmm. you can put it right up around your eyes, around on your yeah. neck. It's in makeup, sits beautifully on it. It never goes dry. It never goes tight. It never pills. No. I love it. Yeah. I think that, and I think it's such a good product. 
So that's they're, they're my go tos in the morning. And also, I'd I like this one as well. I've just worked with Balance Me. Um, and I think they're such a lovely company. They're a small company, but they're doing really well. But they, this is the Hyaluronic Plumping Mist. So just if you haven't got loads of time, that's quite nice. I keep that sort of around the house, really. I, th I always think those mists are quite nice to put on top of makeup afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And you know, this, you know I mean, <clears throat> I'm obviously 15 years older than you, but that, that thing sometimes where you put your makeup on in the morning and then sometimes you get to the end of the day and you just think, a bit yeah. dry, a bit tight. And one of those mists, just brings everything back to life again well it was funny this morning i asked about my skin usually it's okay i have hormonal breakouts still which at 45 i think is rude um but I, rude. my skin this morning it felt really flaky and i was putting foundation on and it all gathered you know in the, this sort of gathered around it i don't know what i had I'd done but I have you changed anything have you upgraded your retinol recently um no, I haven't. I've just run out of my retinol. I was using La Roche Posay anyway, and that's not that strong, is it? So, I mean, no, it's that's pretty gentle. It's probably a 0.3% that retinol, and it's got yeah. loads of B5 in it as well, so it's really calming. Okay, so you've stopped using it, or I think oh, it, it was you've only got the this builders morning. in. Yeah, do you that think it's microfine the... dust is so irritating? I can't tell you what that will do with your skin. Oh, that's so interesting. I hadn't even thought about that. And it's everywhere. It's all upstairs. Yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, if you wear a pair of turn-ups and then yeah. you sort of shake them out and you're on the tube or the train. <laughs> yeah. the hell's that? I remember when we had the, we've done the loft here and then we've done the kitchen here. And I remember doing the kitchen and I remember thinking, why is my skin just uncomfortable and dry and tight? And then you just look at the dust everywhere and think that is landing on your skin uh -huh. and your hair. Well, that's, that's really good. But anyway, I used a bit of the spritz this morning as well, yeah. and that seemed to calm it down. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so they're my go-to serums. And then at night, I either will do a retinol, which I really like La Roche-Posay. I also like Alpha H, which is the glycolic. Oh, no. Okay, question. Mm. Retinol and glycolic on the same night? No, 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 no. Okay, no. right. So how many nights a week retinol and how many nights well, a week glycolic? Well, I'm sort of mixing it up at the moment. And there's no rhyme or reason for this. So please correct me. Um, I, I, depends, it depends on how my skin feels when I go to bed. I might do a couple of days retinol alternate, a couple of days glycolic, glycolic alternate, and then I will leave it for a couple of days and just do probably something like advanced night repair and then a big slather of night cream. Is Lauder advanced night repair one of your 10? I've got about 40 products here, so. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, I have to say, advanced night repair was the first serum I was ever introduced to. Nobody had a dropper product. And for years I used it in my 30s and 40s. And so I still like it. I think it's really calming. I think it's got prebiotic ferments in it. I mean, I don't really believe in the whole DNA enzyme turning back the clock thing. But I do think it's a really no. nice hydrating, soothing barrier repair serum. I just and do. That's, that is all I'm, I'm not into miracles. I just like the soothing nature of it. I like the fact that it, my skin absorbs it really quickly. I'm then able to layer it with a really nice, rich moisturizer for nighttime. So. <laughs> and is your, does so, your skin does your skin like glycolic more than any other acids and um, my skin is really good with acids mm -hmm. I, i've never had a reaction and if i do get a little bit red it will be for literally as soon as i push it on and then it goes off and sometimes i don't put anything on if i want a really really intense go you know if i'm getting a bit hormonal or i can see build up around my nose I will just leave on the acid and then not put anything else on. And that my skin in the morning, interestingly, feels really good. Yeah. <laughs> because, and, I mean, it does anyway if I'm putting a serum and then a moisturiser. But if I just do that occasionally, a couple of times a week, it feels really good in the morning. And I also think at your age, glycolic was definitely my go-to acid. I absolutely loved it. I remember the first time I ever used glycolic overnight. It was a Clinique product. I woke up the next morning and thought... I was like, it was like that scene from Pulp Fiction where they opened the case up and the gold <laughs> light comes up. I just couldn't believe that anything could make so much difference to my skin. 
nowadays as i'm i'm older and drier i like a lactic acid but i have to say okay. that alpha h glycolic is a gold standard it really do you, is do you think i should start using lactic then not if you're still getting breakouts no because it means that your skin is still producing a little okay. bit of excess sebum and glycolic will work for you i mean i would suggest probably if you had occasional breakouts you could put an, a salicylic acid just on the breakout yes and if your skin I've likes that yeah if your skin likes glycolic stick with glycolic okay great. i mean you know more than the retinol do you think uh no i would say that retinol five days a week glycolic the other two days probably. okay Gonna and, also it did, and also it depends if you if you've got a little bit of hormonal breakout just here or here you could put that glycolic on that and then retinol everywhere else i mean yep. It, it's not like you're using a prescription retinoid that no. would sensitize your skin with an acid. You'd probably be okay, especially if you're well tolerant. If your skin tolerates glycolic yeah, really well, you'd does. be fine. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, thank you. Getting advice as well. And then moisturizer. Uh, so one of my 10 is the Votary Nutrient Cream. Okay, tell me what you love about it. I just really love this brand. I just think it's such a lovely, it's, it's a really simple brand. Um, and it, it, I just go, because I'm exactly the same as you. I try so many products. I'm very lucky that I'm sent a lot of products to try. And I have to be careful because we've only got one face. So we have to kind of, I don't know how you all do it, honestly. Um, but this is just one that has stood out to me. My skin re responds really well to it. And it gives you that glow. And honestly, I'm after anything that will give me a glow. Yeah. I mean, it's called the Votary Nutrient Cream, Nutrient by the way. But light. I will list yeah. all the products underneath anyway. So, yeah. yeah. Um, what does it smell like? It doesn't really smell. It's got just a very... It, it doesn't smell slightly herbal isn't it almost. slightly herbal yeah it's um... it's, very, it's very interesting about the votary products because um votary have just created a range that is said doesn't have essential oils in it so it has plant oils in but not essential oils and i really like the way they're going with that it's very yeah. interesting because liz earl has just done the the equivalent of cleanse and polish in an unfragranced version for people who are sensitive to essential oils as well and i just think that it's a really clever move because there is always a percentage of people that have quite the sensitive skin especially if you're using retinols and acids as well so i don't know if this is the new one actually but she's also got they've also got the glow cream which yeah. is the one that i love and have had quite a few um, so i'll put them both in for you so you want the nutrient cream and the glow cream yes 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 please Yes, yes please. yes, please. Uh, now, would you put that on over your glycolic and over your retinol? Um, no. So I would do the retinol and the glycolic in the night. That, to me, is my day moisturizer. Okay. All right. Does that sit well under makeup? Yes, it does. But I would leave it. So I would put it on, go and do what I need to do. I don't tend to wear makeup. if I'm Because I work from home, I will quite often just put on the skincare. And then leave it. And then I've got, I, I have to do, I've got quite a little selection because I'm, I am obsessed with sun cream. Oh, what do you like? That's so interesting. This is such a, somebody literally just DM me today saying, when are you going to do your summer SPF review? And for me, an SPF has to be lightweight. It cannot be gunky. And it exactly. has to fit well under makeup. I well, this is fair if it's dark. It's, 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 it's such a great. Fabulous. Ultraviolet. Yeah. I just think, what a clever idea as well. I mean, it's an Australian brand and they know their sun, sun cream, don't they? But which, which one is that? Is that the so clean is, cream? Yeah. 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 So it's fragrance free, weightless minerals. So you just put it on and it just kind of gives you a glow. It doesn't do anything. You don't get that cast on your face. I, I love this one. This is in my makeup bag all the time. And um, I think what's the interesting about that? It's got a slight soft focus finish to it as well because of the mineral yeah. sunscreens. So it's almost like your skin on its best day. It's got a bit of a filter to it. It's really nice. It is expensive, but I love those products. It's brilliant. It's such a great product. But I'm also obsessed with sun balm. And I've got these. <laughs> I discovered these in America a couple of years ago. And my kids thought I was mad because I went to Target and bought the entire range. Um, but this one to me, this is a more of a holiday yeah. Because it smells like it a holiday. It smells like a holiday. It's coconutty. It's just gorgeous. Is that the SPF 30 stick, push-up stick? Yeah. So that's the little mini face one. But I've got all of the big big ones as well. And that's available over here now, which I'm thrilled about. 
Well, it's really interesting because that sun bum range comes from Brazil. And to me, it just smells like a Brazilian beach. That's, yes. that's just what they smell of. Yeah. All those young oiled up people in thongs, if you were to walk past them, they'd smell exactly like coconut and cambarillas. They, they really want, they know how to do a beach. I love when I went to Brazil, I've been once, and I remember walking love down it. the beach and it didn't matter how old you were, you essentially were in a thong. From like, fresh out of nappies, put you in a thong. 90 year old granddad, put you in a thong. It's such a celebration though. There's no how judgment. Fabulous. Yeah. Everybody's, how fabulous. everybody's how. hammered on Kaiparinas. Yeah. I'm like, I, I could get into this. They all Love really the want nurture. a tan. It's just such a celebration of yeah. beach life and culture. Yeah. I just oh, loved it. Letting, and letting it all hang out and not feeling like you've got to cover up. I love that. Yes. Love that. Yes. So yes. And, and I wanted to mention La Roche, which I did earlier anyway, but with the retinol, but they're, uh, this is their age correct one. So it visibly reduces wrinkles and dark spots. Okay, um, so that's an SPF 50, that one. I find that one very, very, very rich. Yeah, it is, but I like it on holiday. Okay. okay. So th but this would be my every day. I, I, I agree. I agree. I think if you're going to slather it on, I think it's really good. I think if you've got dry skin, the age correct is really nice. If you have oilier skin, yes. look for the La Roche-Posay SPF 50 Shaker Fluid, the brand new one. And that's okay. much more liquidy. Better for guys and better for people with oily skin. But La Roche-Posay, second to none, probably the best SPF range in terms of uh, broad spectrum. So like covering as many UV rays as possible. I mean, they are really clever. They are really clever and their kids range is great it's it's all just very very well thought out and dare i say between you and i <clears throat> garnier is surprisingly similar okay and same company same company okay same packaging good good to know good to know if, if you want to save money and you've got a family of four and you've got to take enough sps for an entire family garnier are so ahead of the game they're really really clever yeah it's yeah. it's just always good i think to try them out so i'm always trying those out and th then on holiday i'll just slather everybody in it um talk you're that mum <laughs> well i try and then they'll just sort of slide into the swimming pool <laughs> cupboard <laughs> um talking of holidays i love summer fridays see you can see how well used this is and this is their jet lag jet lag mask um, I don't use it after the aeroplane because I haven't been in anywhere near an aeroplane for no. coming up for three years. But this is just great if my skin feels a bit dry. So tell me how you use it. So you would be I, obviously. I know for a fact you've come. You've had a day of it in London. You've taken your your makeup off straight away. You're in your yeah. comfies and your bra. In a pair of slides, yeah. <clears throat> and then what do you do? do you, sometimes your skin feels dry, tight, sensitive. Is that how it works? Yeah, so I'll just feel as though it just needs a bit of TLC. So I ha I will, yeah, do all of those things. Bra off, makeup off, not put anything else on, put that straight on. And then I'll just sit in it and I'll just wash it off when I go to bed. I really don't even think you need to, to wash it off, to be honest. You could just, just, you could just it. rub it in. Yeah. I, I pretty much like most of those summer Fridays. Yeah. Products. It does a... If ever you're hot and sicky and you're on holiday, she does a rinse off cleansing gel and it's just, it's so beautiful. It's the one in the green tube and it's just really, really beautiful and lovely for putting in the shower. You can, you know, you know, you come off the beach and you really want to cleanse. You're sticky it. and sandy, yes. Yeah. This is really making me want to go on holiday. I know. This whole chat. <laughs> can I, I just say, you've got the builders in. I, my house has just gone under offer. And I'm, I'm hoping to move this summer, so I won't be going on holiday either. So. Have you found somewhere? Um, I have sort of found somewhere. I'm, I want to move out of London because I want a garden. Um, but uh, I've got two places that I'm thinking of moving to. And this is my second choice in terms of the place. But the house is so beautiful. It's an old, flat-fronted, very early Victorian house with a massive modern cube on the back of it Ooh. so the best of both worlds that's a big big change we did that we moved out how long ago did you move out where did six you move years. out from six, six years. years yeah so we were southeast london where were you uh, west norwood southeast yeah, london I know. and now we're right on the um essex suffolk border which is just gorgeous i mean it's a massive massive change but we did it when the kids were young enough 
I just didn't know what I was doing, but I'm really happy now. I remember as clearly as anything when I first discovered you, watching you plant out your garden <laughs> and paint yeah. your poles and everything. Yeah. And that was the moment at which I secretly developed a huge girl crush on you. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. And I remember looking at it and living, and I'm not one of those people that gets jealous on social. I remember looking at it thinking, I want a garden. I've got to have a garden. You and Sam McKnight. And I was remember thinking, and the way you did it, because again, you're very clever and you've got that eye, the way you created it. And then you put, and then when you shoot out there and you put rugs outside and furniture, I, I literally cannot screen grab quickly enough. Oh, I'm like, oh, I want that, I want that. It's another styling opportunity, isn't it? It's somewhere else to do something. But yeah. it's not big, our garden, but we are surrounded by fields. But it's and so, you've done such a beautiful job. The planting right. is, and bearing in mind, I mean, I think you did that all yourself. You didn't have a garden designer or anything, did oh, you? Oh, no, no, we did. But it was my <laughs> friends. It was my friends. And it, I was their first job. I was their first sort of job after college, yeah. 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 That did so such well. If suddenly, because I obviously live in a tiny little terraced house in West London, if suddenly in about three or four months' time, I suddenly look like I've got loads more natural daylight and space, you'll you've know moved. why. You've moved. I'll have moved. Be, I'd yeah. be expecting pictures sent. I'd like interior. Bear, bear, bearing in mind, I've been in London since I was 17. So it, it's going to be a real culture shock. It's a big move. I, I've been in London since I was 21. So exactly the same. Yeah. I'm not actually, I don't know why I'm saying this. I'm only moving 17 miles outside of London. <laughs> It's not like I'm moving to the middle of nowhere. Well, it is a big move. Yeah, I know. So I am also, I just, you have not chosen a product so far that I dislike, so good on you. Oh, well, that's good to know. Right, what am I going to, I'll do hair next. We have to do hair, because can I, I did describe you earlier on as having the hair of dreams. You also have the same taste in hair products as me, because I know the brand you're going to talk about, and I bloody love that brand. But yeah. please tell me also credit to your hair stylist dresser. You have the most beautiful oh, no. colour. I'm obsessed. That's very kind. Melanie Smith colour at Josh, Josh Woods, yeah. um, who I have been going to for donkey's years now. She is fabulous. And I just love it there. Uh, it's my happy place. <laughs> that salon. <laughs> it is really lovely. And who cuts it? Um, so either Kat or Nicholas. Yeah. Okay. I'm so, going basically, so yeah, I mean, please ignore the graying roots, but um, yeah. Can I just say, I'll find Nicholas's credit as well, and I will credit them all down below, but basically um, it's, if you see anybody with really good hair, the chances are it's going to be one of those trio doing, having something to do with it. Both Sam and Nick, obviously, who've got the hair of dreams, both go there as well. Yeah. They, 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 we have the same set hairdresser and Caroline. Have you, Caroline has them. yeah, have you always had that like unbelievably thick, sexy, the hair that I dream of having? <laughs> I've always had very thick hair. It hasn't gone in my favour. No. Often. Um, so when I was very small, my mum had it cut into a page, but it was poker straight then. And then when I was about 13, it started going wavy. Um, then it went very, very curly. And then as I came out of the hormones, I'm probably going back into the hormones now, aren't I, at 45? I went really kind of frizzy rather than anything. So I do have to do it. I can't just leave it. How grey are you, do you think? What percentage? Pretty grey now. My, when my, my daughter's now 10 and I started going grey as soon as I'd had her. <laughs> don't um, listen. Don't listen. <laughs> she loves you. She loves you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's it's and i'm it's the patches the sort of side patches and here and here but do you know what i, I during lockdown we all had to leave it and i started panicking and i was using all the the products and the root touch-ups and then i just thought oh do you know what? and weirdly just before we'd gone into lockdown i had gone really blonde mel had taken me really 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 blonde probably the blondest i've been in years and years and years sort of peroxide um worst possible timing because within a few weeks the roots were coming through and I am quite dark as you can you, see yeah you are really dark it's really interesting because I was coloring my hair all through lockdown but it's really easy to color your hair if all you do is paint the roots back into your base color but you can never take your hair lighter no at home no ever it, no. that has to that's the one rule you have to have that done professionally yeah and but I also think I have to say that you're almost so, I mean, I personally love your colour, but you're so silvery white that actually you probably could start weaving. I remember Josh mm -hmm. saying to me years ago, 
he calls my greys mother nature's highlights mm -hmm. and in a way it's it's kind of true and you could technically just start using a toner on it and if you took your highlights if they get to the right level of highlights and you just put a silvery blonde toner through them your greys will become your highlights in the end yeah that's a really good tip i just don't know if i'm quite there yet but I, I think you're, I, I think you're too young. I, in another ten years, I yeah. remember Josh as clearly as anything saying to me, "Well, he is brilliant at grey, isn't he?" Yeah, and also I remember him saying to me, "It's time to stop doing the highlights we now need and all over colour." We we've got that far, Nadine. And yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. I also, you, I go, yeah, I go blonder, then I go light darker, and yeah, yeah. Anyway. But also, my theory with grey hair is, and I remember saying this on a live with somebody, is if you have really thick beautiful hair so if you have the hair of sarah harris which by the way you do if you were to grow your hair really long or kristen McMenemy, the supermodel if you've got that really thick hair i just i just think it does when you get to a certain age it starts looking so beautiful when it's gray and that's yeah. how you get the condition up and but i was laughing because when i heard somebody says to me that i should go gray i always think of my mum, and she's not listening so it's fine <laughs> but basically she just has a cauliflower on her head <laughs> so you know the little sort of perm that's sort of white and i can't take credit for that saying i love my mom dearly that's a sally hughes saying um but for me <laughs> it's true. But, it, but for me it's it's because i've got quite fine thin hair i have to be really careful but i do genuinely think when by the time you're my age in 15 years time you're going to be one of those really cool women with like really thick gorgeous gray hair well, i i hope so i, hope I so. bet you follow sarah harris on instagram don't you i do i do and i saw someone on, on a picture the other day and she was an older lady and she just had this amazing silver gray bob she looked fabulous and it was just so she and she just looked really cool i thought like you know it's just age is not the same as having the cauliflower on your head anymore is it you know it's, we're not going to be that, that no my, no, my mum's 86 and i remember doing a live with sally hughes where we were talking about it because sally decided to go great because she's allergic to the ppd the hair dye the brown hair dye and actually she never looked that gray to me but then she'd lift it up and she'd be all gray through the sides yeah. and i just think it looks really chic on her it looks lovely oh, and I again sarah oh. harris kristin mcmenemy jamie lee curtis i mean there are so many amazing oh, women rocking it yeah. Yeah, yeah paulina poritzkova is a bit more my kind of hair it's a bit finer but even she's done it well so yeah anyway shout out to the entire josh wood team yes absolutely we love you we um, love you keristas elixir old team this is my this is my desert island hair product i i mean i love everything that they do anyway but this one i mean you can see if you can see it's it's sort of almost empty and i get slightly panicky and then i have to re-up on my on my elixir old team Tell, do you use that to pre-blow dry and post blow dry? i use it for everything yeah yeah i use it on i put it a bit when i've just washed it to brush it through I will do a little bit when, if I've blow dried it like I have today, I will put a little bit through just to kind of give it a bit of shine. Um, if it's, if my hair's curly or I'm wearing it wavy, I will just put a little bit through the ends to yeah. stop them getting Chunky. everything. Yeah. And I, well, have the, <coughs> I have the sun one, I have the purple one, um, and I've got a, another one of these upstairs because as I say, I cannot be without it. <laughs> I have to say, I do think that Kerastar's products are amazing. And it's, it is one of the reasons why the L'Oreal Vive range is really good. Again, inside a secret, same company. So the technology gets shared eventually. I, the first time I ever fell in love with hair products, it was Kerastar's without a doubt. Yeah, I love the, um, what, the, the little bat base and spray product that they came Oh yes, Fusio Dose. Fusio Dose. And you choose your colour. Yeah. I'm yeah, always green. Yeah. I'm always I'm always green, which is the most damaged. I think I am. Or I was pu purple the last time. I, I, th I think you would be purple or pink. Yeah, more hydrating. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe orange. I don't know. Well, that I mean that is a, it's a dream because I am working with them. This is the second year of me working with them, and they're just always the brand that I would aspire to. You know, when you yeah. when you think when I've got a little bit more disposable cash. That I'm going to buy all their products. I'm going to buy their shampoos. I'm going to buy the big ones. It I, it's very interesting. Come. You see, you see hair brands come and go, but for me, when I see a Kerastars in a salon, I always think it's a mark of a good salon. I, I genuinely think that it's like YS Park hair dry, 
hairbrushes. I'm like, you, that person knows what they're doing if I have a Wires Park hairbrush. And I just love, I love the Kerry Stars products. I do think they're really lovely. They are amazing. So that would be definitely one of my tan. Well, else? Should we do some makeup? Yes. Okay, so one of the things that I'm obsessed with, obviously, is lipstick. Lipstick and lip balm. I actually haven't got a red on tonight because I think I was being minimal for you. I don't know. I don't know why. So I've always This is my definition of a red. Lots of people are asking what it is. What is your colour that you're wearing? <clears throat> and I knew you'd ask and it's on stories. So because oh, last okay. time I wore this, it's like, so it's a combination of this Chantecaille, which Erica would wear on its own and would look absolutely amazing. It's a ah. limited edition one. And then I just put a NARS Afterglow lip balm in orgasm over the top just to soften it oh, out. Yeah. But if I just show you... That is so Erica. I, mean, I would never I wear that. a red, but I do love those warm corals. And then you combine them together. That's what. I, and I, I kept them out because I knew somebody would ask. So, well done. You've done this before. So my, my absolute favourite, Ruby Woo Mac. I mean, it's the matte. It's the matte red of dreams. I'm. It's a bit like leopard print for me. So I'm sort of known for my love of leopard, which I am. But I'm weirdly very fussy about it so it has to be a certain type and i'm exactly the same with the red lipstick um it has to be a matte red i don't yeah. like a glossy red i like it to be a sort of subtle subtle sheen red you you almost want i think the thing about the ruby woo is it's the cleanest red you'll ever see it's so clean it genuinely is the color that everybody can wear i remember doing a live with Dom, their professional makeup artist, yes, when is. they introduced all the different Ruby Woos and he was starting to apply them on me. And I was like, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. He went, trust me, Nadine, it's the red that everybody can wear. I just think it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It is, it's fabulous. So that would be my desert island. If you, uh, so, quick question, sorry. If you were to wear a full on red lip, how would you do the rest of your makeup? Well, I'm very boring with the rest of my makeup. So I'd have to have the glowy skin and then I tend to just do a kind of coppery browny eye and mascara yeah and I like a blusher and I'm obsessed with bronzer do you want me to go on to bronzer or should we stick go, with no go for it you do whatever you want I'm loving um, it because bronzer for me I go through phases so I was obsessed with by Terry for years and then I was sent the Vive which is the modern bronzer. And I think this range is so fab. You can see how much I've used it. It's such a brilliant range. And she's got a great lipstick as well. It's Jamie Genevieve. Um, this is the modern bronzer, but I love it. I'm wearing it now. It's fab. Are they both powders? Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I mean, personally, I do love the Chanel one um, for an all over soft focus glow, but I genuinely do like a matte yeah powder bronzer and i just think did you go down to her pop-up did you go down no, and see i it? i was away i couldn't go i really wanted to go down she's um, just the most delightful down to earth person i just i'm desperate to get her on here but i'm also desperate to do for her to do my makeup which is really amazing really selfish of me well because she always does really young beautiful faces and um and she's completely obsessed with old school journalists. So she's really respectful of old school journalists. She's, she loves Sally. And, and she came up to me and she went, oh, thank you for your support in that beautiful Scottish accent. And I said, is it about time you started making up a wrinkly old face like me? She went, <laughs> I would be honoured. And I went, put a date in. That's Jamie just, Genevieve yes. me. Jamie yeah, Genevieve me. That would be amazing. Well, I think, I think it's probably meant for the contour generation of which yeah. I am not um i'm very much a kind of i will try and give myself cheekbones and i want to try and get rid of the double chins but you know i i i'm not a contour yeah does that the modern bronzer come in different shades somebody was just asking what color um it says light one light two that's that's all it says okay um the the color chanel bronzer that i've got on is the original one it comes in two shades a, a light and one and a dark one but it needs to come in more chanel get your act together <laughs> <clears throat> and then lip balm obsessed with lip balm always got about five lipsticks and two lip balms in my bag so at the moment i'm loving the la mer lip balm oh hello i know can you even believe it i it tell you what i don't like about uh that lip balm um is i like stick lip balms i don't like sticking my fingers in balms you see i don't i really like the well i've, I've got see i've got three i've got the trish 
the Trish McAvoy, which I don't know if you, you've got this one. This is the colour one. Yeah. The, I'm not going to be able to read this without my glasses. The Lip Perfected Conditioning Balm. It's so nice. That, I mean, look, look how much is left of that. Yeah. But that just gives a really nice soft pink to you. And if you're out and about, because sometimes you don't want to be just slathering this on. It no. could be really drying. If I'm out and about, I'm not an, a reapplicate reapplicator kind of a person i'll do it maybe once in the morning maybe once in the afternoon if i can be bothered the rest of the time i will wipe it off and then i'll go back to lip balm yeah um but i've also used carmex for well probably since i was about 12 and weirdly my daughter is now obsessed with them and she has to have one but i just it's just cheap and cheerful so they would be my three do you still use carmex yeah you need to stop using it why it's really really irritating to your lips oh you know that that really strong smelly menthol yeah. cool tingling in the long term it's really bad for your lips oh well i feel bad now i've used it for years there's nothing wrong with, i mean the thing yeah. is if your lips become dry and tight and you continually feel the need to use it it's because basically in the long term it dehydrates oh, okay. your lips in the same way. You know those tingling lip balms that used to make your lips plump up? Yeah. They're just not good, like for, your, not good for your skin in the long term. But so I they have a tendency, you have a tendency to get addicted to it. I did a live with um, an aesthetic doctor called Wasim Tuk Tuk and he's addicted to it. And he was like, I never knew that, Nadine. And I went like, you're the doctor, you should know this. And then all of his dermatologists that work with him at the practice were like, you should know that, Wasim. You should Everyone... never put mint or irritating ingredients on your lips. He was like, all right, I've been told off. Everyone's <laughs> saying they're going to chuck out their Carmex now. Sorry. Gone. <laughs> it's gone, it's gone. Let's do it. Let's do something else. You can always use it on your cuticles because it's just a petroleum jelly. So you can always use a petroleum jelly on your cuticles. Yeah, because I can't use Vaseline on my lips because that makes me really dry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm not obsessed with Carmex. It's just that I've always always got one somewhere. Yeah. No, and t trust me, I love the smell. The smell takes me straight yeah. back. I'm obsessed with it, but I've just, yeah. Yeah. Noted. <laughs> Right. It's not bad, is it? I mean, you've gone all the way down to lip balms before I've said, oh, I don't like that. But that's pretty good going. Uh, foundation. This yes. is the Bobby, Bobby Brown Skin Foundation Stick. I love it. It's, again, one that I repeat by. Um, I'm going what? through a change with my foundation because for a long time, I just use CC cream. I like the IT Cosmetics. I like the fact that there's an SPF in it. Um I love Trini's BFF cream, so I would put that on first. Then I've got the Bobbi Brown. And okay, I... so quick question. Why have you moved away from the It Cosmetic CC cream back to the stick foundation? And tell me I... how you blend that foundation out. I want a bit more coverage. So I initially thought that this was going to be really drying. And when I tried it, I was a bit sceptical. And it's far from drying. I find it perfect texture so i will literally sort of go across yeah. and then i get my lovely jones road miracle brush and i just buff it all in and then i'm done i do a little bit of under eye the thing to remember with bobby is bobby has clinically dry skin so everything she ever created all of her skincare is made for dry skin and that's why those foundation sticks are so amazing because they have what's known as slip in the industry. So you can just keep shearing it out, put it over the right skincare, and it does everything from a full coverage concealer right the way out. And that's why makeup artists absolutely love it. It's very interesting. So you use the Jones Road brush, do you? Yeah, I like their brushes. Okay. Um, what did you think of the Miracle Balm? The Miracle Balm I liked. I wouldn't say, no, I know you didn't like it at all, did you? I didn't like the natural one. Um, I then got the pink the rose colour because it gives you that sort of shiny glowy cheek which I really like but, but, it, I, it, pref it, but I prefer never... the pot rouge from Bobby Brown yeah but it never dries no it always and so and because you've got lovely thick hair I bet your hair goes like that and then falls down whereas mine <laughs> just does this <laughs> <laughs> it's like having a lip balm on your face yes and it's that sort of texture. Yeah. I think if you want to, I think if you want that kind of, or if you've got very dry skin and you want the glow, I think it would be great. 
um, but it's not something that I want to use every day. It's not, so, it's not something I grab for. I've got a tray in my bathroom that has my everyday makeup on it and it's not on that, but the pot rouge is. Yeah. So what kind of pot rouge are you? And do you know what colour stick you are as well in the Bobby Brown? Yeah, so in, the, in this, I'm golden beige in and what, the foundation stick. Okay. And what were you in the it Cosmetic CC cream? Which again, I like you, I used for years that. Natural medium. Yeah, same as me. The light is too light and I've got a light upstairs, which is annoying because <clears throat> you want to use it. And then in the BFF, I'm a medium. Okay. And in the pot rouge? Now, the Pot Rouge is the new one that I am actually the ambassador for this year because it's 100% of the proceeds are going to SmartWorks, which is... But it's such an amazing product and, and charity. I love that product. No, it's just, it's just called Rose. Is it? Okay. And now, do you use that exactly the way that Bobby originally designed, i.e. lips, lips, cheeks, eyes, everything? They say you're not supposed to use it on your eyes anymore. Mm -hmm. I know. You're not supposed to, but obviously you can in, if you're making that decision. But I wasn't allowed to, for example, for the photographs. I oh, couldn't right. show that I was putting it on my face. But I love it on my cheeks. I do put it on my lips, but it's a bit light for me. I prefer a sort of slightly deeper. Punchy um, colour. Yeah. But, but it I comes in an amazing range of shades. It, it really does. does. It's gorgeous. But the, the one that is out, the, the most recent one that all the proceeds are going. It's such a versatile suit to everybody. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. I'm, it was the I'm first a big cream, Bobby fan. It was the first cream blush I ever used. And I still think it's beautifully, beautifully formulated. Somebody said to me the other day about makeup. And I, actually, I use a Borium bases. But somebody said to me something about makeup. Yeah. I, I love the... It would. I don't think it'd give you enough coverage, though, because I went from It Cosmetics down in coverage okay. to uh, the Arborium. And then uh, what if you've got... If you've got stiff, you know, areas that you want to cover, would you just use a concealer then? Yeah, yeah. So less foundation and less foundation and more yeah. concealer. And most of my concealer is around my eyes anyway. But I, um, uh, somebody said to me the other day about makeup, and they were asking for some advice on DM, and I just said pretty much Mac and Bobby Brown. You can't go wrong. If I could only buy two makeup brands ever again, it would always be Mac and Bobby Brown. And I think it's because even though you and I have fundamentally different style our makeup isn't really a statement makeup. No. I, I don't really want anybody to look at me and go great makeup i just want to go oh she looks okay yeah she won't frighten small children and animals she'll be fine <laughs> and i just think that to me i've grown up with them i'm loyal to them you know i love charlotte tilbury i love a bit of fun i love these i love a bit of chantakai i love a bit of nars but when it comes down to it i always a bobby brown mac right? and i'm exactly the same i wore it on my wedding day you know it's just yeah. one of those that's been with me through the big moments of my life and i'm just i'm very comfortable with the range i feel like it's not going to be too ott it's not that sort of naked palette where you're like oh yeah. it's more it's much more muted. it's just grown up yeah it is yeah. someone's asked me to show the pot rouge and i haven't brought it downstairs with me um but it is over on erica's main grid yeah, it is. As, uh, by the way, so did you take, did you, did you have those pictures taken professionally? Yes, my friend Rekka takes all my worky pictures. They're beautiful. And also, oh, can I just say, those pictures of you in the John Lewis Matthew Williamson ad. Oh, thank they you. They are the nicest pictures. Is that Rekka as well? Yeah. Oh, well, we absolutely need to credit Rekka here. I need to find her. But also, uh, is she available? Will she available? be available 17 miles outside of London in the new Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Does she take your really beautiful fashion shots as well? Yeah, so I work with her. So she was, we've not gone, we go back years and years. She was um, a Marks and Spencer press officer. So when I was a fashion editor, she was in the press team. So we've known each other. We got married the same year. You know, we've always sort of known each other. And then she left PR and went into professional photography. Yeah. So it's at Rekka, you're going you're gonna to have to spell this out for me now. She's at, oh, she's so complicated, at picturex, R-E-X, underscore Rekka Damha. I'll send it to you. Okay. She, could, she right. couldn't make it more tricky to spell. But no, she's fabulous. And thank you. I will pass that on. I just, I absolutely love your pictures. I genuinely, I do find your entire feed completely joyous and really well so edited as well. I know, I just, I absolutely love it. I don't suppose you've got your book to hand, have you? No, but I've got the uh, the cover. There you go. 
So if if you <laughs> and my if you, and my daughter's version of it. If you want a little slice of Erica Davis, she has got a book called Leopard is a Neutral, which I absolutely love because it is and truly. I, I once said to Erica years and years ago, I mean, this must have been, it was pre-pandemic, so it must have been three years ago. I tried to get Erica up to town one day to film with me because I just thought it would be hilarious if we took over maybe a room somewhere and dressed each other. Yeah. <laughs> Can we still do that? Because <laughs> I am so boring. I always wear black. <clears throat> and You're I not know boring. You know what you like. And that is all it that is all it's about you shouldn't be trying to be somebody else you should be wearing clothes that make you feel comfortable and that's I, all you can for. and but also can i just say i just think one day we need to take over somewhere john lewis marks and spencers or something i'll bring my videographer along you bring rec along and i just think we'd have the most fun day with you taking me completely out of my comfort zone like literally it. i'm gonna push you nadine not only are you gonna wear color you're gonna wear clashing prints you're gonna <laughs> do this do this do this do this how tall are you erica because you're quite tall aren't you no five foot five i'm average oh, in every oh, every way five. okay i think my fear of of color and pattern comes from the fact that basically in my shoes i'm six two mm. and i just feel it might be a bit too much on a big unit I don't think you should ever feel like that. You're not a big unit at all. You're gorgeous, statuesque, my darling. Statuesque, very, very, very tall. People are always surprised when they meet me. No. Is there anything else or is that everything? <clears throat> Have I done everything? Oh, well, there's a couple more things. Um, this is the only perfume <laughs> that I wear made a couple of others that I love but I have I remember buying this when I was 14 years old I have never worn anything else Le Classique Jean-Paul Gaultier um, and it's what's so lovely about this is that it's such a favorite that my friends from years ago will give me a hug and they'll go you smell like you yeah I just love it even that sort of even now you know how sometimes you can't smell your own perfume after a while this, if I've got it on clothes that I've worn and I pick them up, I get that lovely talcum powdery. I just It's love just it. absolutely timelessly elegant and beautiful. And the flacons. I have a friend that collects the flacons and refuses to wear the perfume because she wants to keep them in mint condition. And her collection was featured in Vogue. And she no basically way. just has every single iteration because they've been all the every... summer fragrances and but also yeah. all the different so basically he Jean-Paul Gaultier teams with designers so he'll have a designer and he'll have a striped one and then he'll have a floral one yeah. and she has an entire cabinet now full of them it's does she, does she actually wear it oh she loves the fragrance but that's like a separate one and then she just collects the flacons because they're so unbelievably beautiful it was also the inspiration for talking of her so she's now gone to work for the company that makes the Billie Eilish fragrance and that's what inspired her flap on as well so oh, there you go that's I know really I was going to say to you do you have a, a signature fragrance but that's answered that question perfectly yeah. Jean Paul Gaultier Le Classic I mean it's just and it's one you know my mum will buy it for me for Christmas it's just it's such a part of me as I say I remember buying my first one with my babysitting money when I was 14 and I've never, ever looked back. I just love it. I love the air in fragrances as well, because, and I think that's mainly because the bottles are so incredibly beautiful. And I could see the tops of those gorgeous bottles as handles or things, knobs and things. They're really beautiful because they're almost like, I mean, I don't think they are, but they're made to look like they're resin, but they're made to yeah. look like semi-precious yeah. stuff. And they're really beautiful. Do you remember <clears throat> for a little while when I was still on magazines, I remember when Erin Lodge, do you remember she had an interiors range? But I don't yeah. think it's around anymore now. No. I don't so think she did it. sort of trinket bowls and flacons but and can you vases. Imagine, imagine those lids with it within. Oh, I just love them. So Have you they're ever met the other her? ones that I'd wear. No. Oh. She's the epitome of sort of New England chic. She really is. <clears throat> I remember being in the Estee Lauder offices and they have the best offices in New York, right overlooking Central Park. And I remember going past an office. And uh, going, oh my God, who office, whose office is that? That's like the, the most, it's like something out of a, like a Hollywood movie. It's so gorgeous. I went, yeah, that's Aaron's office. I'm like, oh yeah, you can tell. Oh, and this, and ama imagine, this imagine amazing view like, overlooking yeah. Central Park because it's super high up, that building. It's, it's 
Yeah, it's amazing. It's the kind of place you wanted to be left on your own, so you could open yeah. all the drawers and see everything. Look at all the bottle tops. Yeah, the kind of and then one. One on. final one, and then I'll I'll stop talking. No, it's fine. Is this new brand Necessaire, um, and it's the body lotion. I'm a sucker for a body lotion. If I'm happy with anything, um, but this one and I would say this and Dove body lotion are my absolute favourites. Do you use a particular Dove body lotion? It's just the the original, whichever the original. one that is. Yeah. And that necessary one, has it got any active ingredients in it? Because obviously the whole point of necessary is it's loaded with active, the active ingredients you put on your face, but in your body. The daily multivitamin moisturiser for the yeah. skin. I love that. I think it's really nice. And I love but, the fact that it's sort of no gender. It's very cool. It's minimal. Really I nice. do. I think that brand is going to go from strength to strength. I know for a fact that they're going to start introducing more acid lotions, uh, retinol body lotions, vitamin C body lotions. I just think it's really interesting. The idea is really simple. Why would you treat the skin on your body any differently to the skin on your face? And I just think it's exactly. a really lovely brand. Really yeah. lovely brand. You have been a complete star. I love that. Can we keep going? <laughs> And seriously, as soon as we're out of lockdown properly and you can come up for the day, I really think we should film together. We'd have so much fun. Well, I've come to your new house. We could film yeah. in your new well, house. Well, I will have loads more space then. You will actually have room for two people and a videographer and Rekka to come as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. I will list everything below. Obviously, if you don't follow, you need to follow Erica oh, Davis. She thank is you. pure joy. She really, really is. She's got an amazing book as well with all of her style secrets in. She has a great garden. She has a beautiful house. <laughs> um, don't stalk her quite as much as I do, but just screen grab everything and you'll be fine. You're so kind. You're so kind. Thank you and for I having me. And I will list everything below. If I list anything and I miss somebody's tag off, just go in underneath and say, that's Nicholas's tag or that's Rekha's okay. tag. Okay. So we can okay. credit everybody as well that sort of is part of your beautiful world. Yes. Thank you, my darling. Thank so you. Much fun. Thank you for having Lots me. Lots of love. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye-bye.